please welcome Bill Weisbart playing with Talton. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Uh, Joe's a great guy, and um, he's forever indebted to me because I was the one who, at our Pasadena meetups, figured out how we could actually get coffee that he could spill on himself. <laughs> um, let's see, a little bit about me very, very briefly. Uh, I started out my career, well, someplace else, and I came to Southern California and ended up uh, working at the other Rockwell Canyon, the one which is in uh, Thousand Oaks at the Science Center for a number of years. Um, first as a technical person, then as a uh, program manager, and then kind of phased out of that, took a little time off, decided to become a high school teacher, a decision I'm still regretting. I retired from that about a year, year and a half ago and, uh, and found myself very lonely and went back to substituting a couple days a week just because it's super fun. <laughs> and, um, and I got interested in websites a long time ago, but I got interested in WordPress really when I started teaching high school. I was teaching physics and chemistry and I realized the textbooks had a lot of, you know, good information presented in a very pedantic and difficult to understand manner because I was reading the textbooks and I couldn't really understand a lot of it either. So I started going on to YouTube, which I found to be an amazing resource, which uh, was just in its growing stages at that time. And I developed a website where I, I just collected a lot of YouTube videos for the students to read and put in questions for them and added some, some, some thought-provoking ideas as an adjunct material to my high school lessons. And I tried a couple of formats and I, I kind of stumbled across WordPress. And I was a little bit kind of concerned about it because being a technical guy, I knew that if you're using something to build a website, to build anything other than direct coding, that, well, you're not a developer, right? And Jason made a good point of that, but guess what? WordPress is extremely, incredibly powerful. And if you get really frustrated, you can get down into the nuts and bolts of it, which is what I hope we do here today. Um, that's a lot about me. Uh, show of hands. You have nice hands. Thank you. Put them back. <laughs> uh, seriously. Uh, has anybody here heard of, raise your hand if you've heard of child themes. Everybody. Great. No, not everybody. Uh, raise, your, raise your left hand if you have not heard of, yeah, good. Okay. Okay. A couple of people have not heard of child themes. Who, raise your hand if you have used child themes, if you've used child themes. Raise your hand if you're afraid of child themes. <laughs> okay. Raise your hand if you have, have coded your own child themes. Raise your hand if you've used a plugin for it. Okay. Some people love the plugins. Okay. What I'd like to do today is try to give you uh, an idea of how, well, not an idea, but a real understanding of how child themes really work, what they do, why you should have them, how to create them from scratch, and even if you end up using a plug-in or not using them at all, at least you'll have an understanding uh, of, of how they work. And I'll be displaying some code in here. Please do not be too afraid. There is some, I don't know if there's any HTML code, but there's some CSS code. Who here has used CSS? Like, like a lot of people, and I'm sure you all use it far better than I do. No question there, okay? Um, let me point out that this is at the theme, this addresses issues at the theme level, not at the page builder level, okay? And I also am a great fan of Elementor, and I use Elementor and Elementor Pro on a regular basis, and I think they're amazing tools, okay? So, what are child themes? Why do you need to use child themes? And when? And how do you build them? And hopefully, that's what we'll go through today. Okay? 
A child theme is an add-on to an existing theme. So you have a theme. There are default automatic themes. Does everybody know automatic? No. Automatic is a company uh, which, which has had some great successes. It's the company that, that actually um, has developed and maintains the WordPress platform and they have some default themes. The default themes are really excellent in my opinion because they are extremely well developed code, they're very robust, they're very error free and, um, and that's a good starting place. Now I've used other themes as well, okay, but I, I generally tend to gravitate back to automatic. Automatic does have some essential problems their spelling is not very good. They put an extra T in automatic. I think it's A-U-T-O-M-A-T-T. -A -A -T. There's two T's. There's too, too many T's. T-O-T-O-O-T. -T -O -O -T. Okay. Um, the, when you have, you always start with a theme. But now you want to do things to that theme which may be a little bit special, okay? You want to modify the theme and add some custom capability to the theme itself, okay? Custom templates, custom page templates is the example I'm going to go through here today. And then the child theme actually sits on top of the parent theme and I had a little picture of a kid sitting on a guy's shoulders but I didn't fit it on the page. But that's really what it does. You have your theme and then above that, think of it, you have your child theme, okay? Um, and it modifies the theme itself. Now if I move on, I should move a little more quickly. Oh, why should you use it? Oh, you modify a theme, WordPress publishes an update, you lose all your custom code, it's just gone away, you'll never see it again. Boo-hoo, your changes disappear. Ah, you spend money on the theme. Who spent thirty dollars on the theme? Who spent sixty dollars on the theme? Who spent two hundred dollars on the theme? Lots of people, right? And it's a little scary when you start making changes, because if you break that theme, what's going to happen? They're going to want a support contract. How much? Fifty dollars a month? Two hundred dollars a month? I don't know. Varies, varies a lot, right? I'd rather spend my money on other things. Like, uh, like that suit. That would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, snazzy. Okay. Or you just made some really cool changes that you would like to port over to another website. You, you build a website for somebody, you get some great styling changes and you really like them. And you show that site to another client. They say, I love that and you want to use those same changes again, pick them up, move them to the new site that you're building for that new person. You've already done your CSS, assuming that you're using the same base theme. So that's important, okay? Um, and if you really, 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 really follow my example and screw it up, you can always press delete and start your child theme over, it will not kill the parent theme. It will not affect the parent theme. That's the key. Okay? Ay, um. <laughs> yeah, we won't go there. Uh, but essentially, my wife made me put in this picture. Uh, it's kind of like the file cabinet in my garage, which used to be my office. Okay, the two things you need to know is there is a folder structure that's very, very important, and there are essential files which must be in a child theme. And this is the key. Oh, this is the key. No, this is really the key. You have a themes folder. Okay, everybody knows that if you go into your, um, mm, where is it? Um, into your cPanel, into your host, you have your WordPress, and then you go into WP content, and inside of WP content you have something called themes, that's a folder. And inside that theme folder you have 
one or more parent themes. It, currently, WordPress ships with three default themes. You can add other themes into that folder. Um, and here you're just adding another theme by creating a new folder, which you're calling the child theme. There's really nothing more to it than that. It's a folder. That's all it is. But it does have to have certain specific files in there. A style.css file is essential, and a functions.php file is, is essential. If you're not familiar with these languages, please do not be frightened. All the code for all the files I'm going to talk about today are available on my website and may be downloaded for a free monthly membership of $250 per week. <laughs> Thank you very much. Once you give me your email address, which I won't do anything with. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Here's a folder structure. Um, child themes here is the name of a folder which is the target folder of a subdomain I created on my website just for this presentation. So I created a folder. I pointed the subdomain at this child themes folder. That's it. Here are the rest of the WordPress folders. Within this, I have WP content, which is where most, most developers always go first. Within that, I have themes, and I have some of the default automatic themes. Uh, 2019, which I am not in love with yet. 2017, which I've used a lot and I absolutely love. That's the one where things scroll. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's very cool. But for this, I use this very standard theme. 2016. I created another folder called the 2016 child. I made up that name. It could have been anything. No, seriously. You can name it anything you want. Okay. The necessary files, and this is essentially, you must have a style.css in the theme folder. You must have a functions.php file in the in that folder as well. The screenshot is optional, but it's really cool. And don't worry about custom templates. We'll talk more about that later. Okay? Oh. Okay. This is the style sheet. What's essential here is that you declare a name for your child theme. And that's the first line. Theme name 2016 child. That's just what I called it. I could have called it my broken car, but I didn't. Okay. The other thing which is essential is that you declare the template. This child theme will be using the 2016 parent theme. Whatever parent theme you're using, you have to declare it here. The rest of the stuff should be there, quite honestly. Um, you should put in your, your developer's URI, which is your website. You should put in the license, all that other stuff, a description and a version. It's all good so you can keep track of it, but it's not essential. And by the way, this slash and an asterisk declares a comment. And this asterisk and a star, asterisk and a slash ends the comment. And as we all know, comments are ignored by programs, right? Wrong. These comments at the top of the CSS file are read by the, um, I don't know what, by the browser, I guess. Um, and the other one, you, oh, one, let me go back. And then I haven't put in any CSS here, but the CSS would follow. So anything you write in terms of styles and colors and, and div IDs and all that stuff would happen afterwards. You do not have to copy the entire 2000 line style sheet of the theme. You only need to add in a few lines according to the changes that you make. So it's really quite simple and it's a good way to stay organized. Okay. The functions file, functions.php, please do not be afraid of PHP. You can copy it and paste it, and it works. What we're doing here is enqueuing 
two style sheets, one of which is the 2016 parent style sheet. And you're going to get template directory, URI. This is a function that basically gives you the path to what? To the style.css file of the parent. Okay? You don't have to know how to code this, you just know how to have to know how to copy it. Okay? We're also going to enqueue, that means line up for when the page loads, or when the site loads rather. Um, the path to the child theme style sheet. And now when the thing loads, when the site loads, these two files will get executed, basically. Okay? Good? Okay? Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not believe what you read on the web, please. It will kill you, okay? There are so many references. There, there are people out there who back in the, in, in the Paleolithic era were creating style sheets by, uh, by declaring everything inside of the, um, the style.css and using an include statement. And it worked really, really well, except it was slow because all the style sheets needed to load sequentially and it's like you go down the path and then loading the next one sequentially and yes it does make a noticeable difference in page speed. I haven't tested it with any of the uh, metric uh, testing programs but I have, I mean you can see it. So this newer method is there but the people who did this are well known and so they have great SEO and so they show up at the top of the search list but avoid this at all costs. Do not do that, okay? Do it with the enqueue function, with, with enqueue statements in the, um, uh, in the functions.php file, okay? Oh, and of course we want to have fun. That's the title of this talk. So let's have fun with it. Let's give it a nice uh, picture, which will remind us what it is. And for this one, be a star, no. It's 2016, so for simplicity, I just said 2016. Just use 2016 as a PNG file. And you'll upload that as well. And you need to name it screenshot.php in, um, in your file structure. Now, what does it look like? Once I've done all that work, I go into WordPress, I go into my dashboard, I look for themes, and lo and behold, I've got 2016. And guess what? I've got a child theme, 2016 child. That's the name that I declared in the style.css file. And I gave it a picture just to remind me what it is. And besides, that's fun. It looks unique. And if you show that to a customer, they go, oh, wow, I haven't seen that on the web anywhere. And you go, yeah, I just stole the picture off of a free picture site and I kind of like it, or this is a picture of my dog. That's not a picture of my dog. I think that's a picture of something my dog ate. Yeah, and then my dog got very sick. But it's a dog. <laughs> okay, what if it doesn't work? Does it ever not work? Yes. Has it ever happened to anybody? Really? Okay, this is frightening. Uh, not every not every custom theme is structured the same way. Most of them are built with, built with SAS files, which are um, partial pieces of CSS, and it's structured a little differently, and lots of times um, this straightforward approach to enqueuing two style sheets does not work. But what you can do is you can go on the web, and I'll show you how to do that later. Okay. Um, how do you know? You make a change to your CSS file on the child's child theme and nothing happens. That's how you can test it. Okay. The first thing you want to do is you want to use a plugin called Show Current Template by Jocati. This is really excellent 
And what it does is if you pull down a list of the files that are actually the templates that are actually being used on your page. And right away you can see if it's calling your child theme or not. And if it's not, then you have a problem. Like maybe when I did a child theme called Gutenberg's Child, I called it Gutenberg apostrophe S child. It didn't work because of the apostrophe. That doesn't work. And it won't get recognized. It can be trivial and it can actually cost you hours. Okay. Uh, what else? Cash. I'm forever filling up my cache on Firefox, even though that Firefox is a really high performance browser. So I keep a copy of Opera available, which I'm always clearing out the cache because that's about the cleanest browser that there is. And no bells and whistles, but it's good for testing. Okay? May I move on? Move on, not pass on. Yeah. Oh, and if it doesn't work, you can go on the web. I was using Ocean WP, which is uh, the, one of the recommended themes for Elementor. It didn't work. I had to do a web search. I found their code. And it looked like that. And I copied it and pasted it. And it worked. It's as simple as that. Now, here's the meat of our talk, finally. Um, a child theme needs to have certain folders and certain files. Within the child theme folder, I have a custom templates file. I have a template parts file, which you may or may not need. You'll see why. A functions.php file and a screenshot and a style.css. This is a listing of the files that I actually have within these folders. Within custom templates, I created these four. Within template parts, I needed it for one of them, for the canvas, so I created a, another file here. Don't be scared. The code for all these files is available on my website for a small fee. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to take you down the path of a website where we start with a basic page, a default page, and then develop some changes to it. First, change that page so it has no sidebar. After we've taken out the sidebar, take that code and develop a new page template which not only has no sidebar, but is also full width. And then take that page which is no sidebar and full width, get rid of the header and the footer. And then once we've gotten rid of the header and the footer, we still have the annoying page name. So let's get rid of the page name, the title, and create what's called a canvas. Many themes come with a canvas. Not every theme comes with a canvas. You with me? Mm -hmm. Do I need to stop? Okay, let me go on. Okay. Uh, And here we go. Uh, menu, home. I'm going to go for, okay. So this, this website is called Fun with Child Themes. And this is the home page, which just describes that uh, we're at Santa Clara today. Santa Clarita today. Um, and this is a link to the presentation. So you can get to that. And I'll give you the URL for this as well. It's just child hyphen themes dot from hyphen this hyphen century dot com. And now let's go to the menu. And I want to take a basic page using a child thing. Here I have just a basic 2016 page and I put some CSS code into the child theme. So my child.css, uh, my style.css, it starts out with this header which just declares the name and it's all in the comments. You've seen this before. And down here I have some super simple 
uh, CSS, and I'm sure you guys can do a much better job than I can on this, where I'm just defining some spacers, giving them full width, giving them a height, and giving them a color. One is yellow, the other is blue, and then something I use someplace else. Oh, there's the yellow block. They just did that in CSS. I'm so fancy. Oh, look, blue. Yeah. That's about the best styling you've seen all day, right? I didn't do it with Elementor. <laughs> I love Elementor, by the way. I think it's amazing. I've used both Elementor and Beaver Builder, and I have a strong preference for Elementor. I think it's amazing. And yes, you can build templates with this method and then populate them using Elementor. Because a lot of themes don't come with a canvas. Let's see what else we can do. Oh, check it out. Where's my sidebar? Oh, because of the... F I wonder if I can make... Yeah, that's what I want to do. There we go. Okay. So, and then you can see I have a sidebar on the right. Maybe I don't want that sidebar. So I'm going to go to this next page. Page, no sidebar. And what do we have? Ooh, it's gone. <coughs> Are you impressed? No? Thank you very much. <laughs> and this is how you do it. Create a new file name, no sidebar, .php. Please don't be afraid of PHP. Okay. Open the default page template from your parent theme, page.php. Copy the entire code. Put it into the no sidebar.php file. Save it, of course. And then change the template name at the top to no sidebar so that you can identify it. It does not create confusion. And then to look for this one line of code that says get sidebar and just comment it out. Boom, your sidebar is gone. Yay. And there's my sample text. But it doesn't take up the full width. And I find that extremely annoying. So I'm going to go to page full width. Oh, that's nice. There it is, page full width. Nice. How did I do it? In the custom templates folder, create a new file called page full width or full width.php. Copy the code from the one with no sidebar and change one attribute. And you're done. You also have to put something in the CSS file. And that's the entire. It's no more complex than that. But it still has this annoying header. Let's get rid of the header. Oops, it's gone. How did I do it? I created a new file, copied the file, copied the code from the last PHP file, and then commented out the get header sec, get header um, function. This is a PHP function. And it's actually at the bottom of the code. So I'm uh, helping you find it. And look what we have. We have a simple page with no header, no footer, no sidebar, and it's full width. But it still has an edit thing down there. I don't like that so much. There's no um, menu bar, so I've got a back page to get out of it. And now I'm going to go all the way to blank canvas. This one's a little bit more complicated. Here you have to create another folder called template parts. You have to create a file in template parts. And so I give you all the instructions for doing that here. Um, rather than going through all of this, let me just say that th all of these files are available on my website. Okay? And it was interesting, I was looking on the web the other day as I was writing this, going like, well, how do I do this again? I forgot. Because it's been a while. Right? I looked on the web. I did a little web search. And I found so many entries that say, why in the world would you want to get rid of 
the title. Who in the world would want to do that? That makes no sense whatsoever. And there were like 20 top ranking posts that, that talked about that. But in reality, sometimes you do. For example, if you wanted to unlock the secrets, the amazing secret of how you will create a blank canvas without you having to pay a developer. <laughs> Click this amazing link. And, oh no. Haha, ha, lead capture. This is actually on my main site. So have you ever, has anybody ever seen those before? Usually in your spam box, right? And you read all of them? And you enter your email on all of them? Awesome, I do too. I have such a big spam folder, it's amazing. <laughs> I don't actually have any people who email me directly, but I have like 300 spams a day. Ah. Now, I said this was easy. What you must get right for this is the folder structure. This might be a little difficult to read, but within the, the child theme folder, I have a folder called custom templates. I have a folder called template parts. I have the function.php. I have the screenshot, which gives me the nice picture. And I have the style.css. Boom. That's what you need at the top level. Within the custom templates folder, I've created several different files. Okay? And within the template parts folder, I only created one file. Where can you get them? Down here. These are all the files, but I uploaded them onto my server as .txt because I didn't want them to execute. So if you wanted to use these, and suppose you wanted the functions file, you would create your functions.php file as a new file, just with the .php extension. It's an absolutely empty file. You would open this text file, copy and paste the code. Let me show you. Uh, functions.txt, there's the code. Copy and paste it. That's a present to you. So all of the templates that I've shown you today are available for you to make on your own using this assortment of files. Okay? How are we doing on time? Five minutes? I don't have anything more to say. <laughs> I really don't. I'm sorry. Uh, you can are put it up to questions if you Talk slowly. <laughs> I would like to no. Um, no seriously um, I'm a geek uh, I'm a talking head I'm not an exercise guy my wife is um, was, a ba was a ballet modern dancer she's been teaching Pilates for 25 years uh, and now she's a performing ballroom dancer and she'll come home from a coaching lesson and she'll show me what they did and she'll do one of these where like one measure takes like three and a half minutes you know and it's incredible amount of control I don't have that kind of control okay so don't worry about it okay questions I'm sorry yes how can I help you Ah, okay. Um, hmm, good question. You can add your own modifications onto anything. Okay. And I think under the GNU license, uh, that becomes open source so anybody could use your stuff if they could find it. I think that's correct. That's the idea of WordPress. It's very open. Um, other than that, I don't know that there are any rules. I mean, the thing is that People sell theme, people develop themes and to sell products, make money, it's great. And if one of those themes fits your needs exactly today, that's wonderful. 
But if you decide to use it, always, always, I've gotten to the habit, get that theme and put on, a, put on a child theme even if it has no content, even if you've made no modifications. Because later on you might want to make modifications and you can add them in later. Okay? Um, if you flip from one from the parent theme to the child theme and back, you may lose the customizer unless you've exported it. Uh, so you want to always start by having the child theme created. Does that answer your question? Good. Thank you. Yes? What is the name of your website? Oh, 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 oh. Um, uh, I forgot. Uh, where the hell is that thing? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Give me a second. Thank you. <laughs> you have to have the dashes. And why do I put them in? Not just to make it inconvenient to type. Um, in the early days of SEO, um, Google talked a lot about user experience. And so I said, well, maybe what I should do is make the, the, the URLs human readable instead of just a whole endless bunch of characters, right? Mm -hmm. And it turns out Google doesn't like that. <laughs> oh, did you hear about Google Plus? Yes, yes it's officially dead. Yeah. <laughs> What's it? I actually like that one. You like that one? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sorry one for you. The one, yeah, I, I was like, yeah. Now, okay, from the century.com, that's my company, without the dot com. Um, child themes dot from the century.com. And I have a contact page there in case you want to contact me. Um, what are we doing? Questions? Any other questions? Oh, that's frightening. No more questions? Thanks, Bill. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.